there is a natural feeling that if God is running the world and he is just and good, that people who do well enough in the service of God should have happy, smooth, satisfying lives. If a person fails, then some kind of corrective will be necessary. But if a person is good enough, serves God with enough strength and consistency, then their lives should be smooth, happy, satisfying, without any serious suffering. This is a very gross misconception. The greatest people of all time, people whom we cannot hope to compare with, had lives with considerable and excruciating suffering. Let me give you a few examples. What is more precious to a person than his children? What can cause more suffering and anguish than problems with children? Look at Abraham. Abraham had eight children, Ishmael, then Isaac, then six more after Sarah had died. Seven out of the eight children were lost to him. Isaac had twins, Yaakov and Esau, and Esau grew up to be a horrible criminal with whom there is strife and competition throughout the ages. Jacob suffered ten of his sons, ganging up against Joseph and selling him as a slave to Egypt. Jacob spent 22 years believing his son was dead. The death of a child is the worst thing a person can go through, and I wish that on nobody. Judah lost two children. Aaron the high priest lost two children. King David lost two children, first with Bathsheba and then Absalom, who rebelled against him. They were not strangers to marital problems. Sarah is so angered by what Abraham did, so she asked God to judge between them. Yes, she paid for this statement, but she obviously was in great pain about what she perceived to be Abraham's mistake. Yaakov, answered Rachel without adequate sensitivity when she asked for children. Am I in place of God, he said. And he was criticized severely for saying this because this is not how you answer a woman who is in pain, wanting children. Leah expresses herself to Ryle. You want my son's gift of flowers? Was taking my husband a small thing? Real pain and competition. David comes to Jerusalem with the ark and dances in front of God naked. And his wife, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window and was disgraced by him. And she expressed the content that was in her heart. She was punished by not having children till she died. Think of a person who loves God and wants to serve God, Moses. As a teenager, he flees from Egypt. The Torah is very kind to us. The next chapter, we find him at a well in Media, and he's already in his late 70s. The text skips five decades of his life. He's a fugitive, away from family, his people, his brethren. Abandoned. At age 80, he sent back to Egypt 60 years later. How did he live through these 60 years? Just imagine if the Torah will put a chapter for that 60 years about what he went through. Abraham and Sarah gets married with everyone else. People are having birthday parties. 
childbirth ceremonies, taking their children to school, and they are married for one decade, two decades. People are having grandchildren and nothing for them. They leave and come to another land at age 75 and age 65, and still no children. Ten years later, still nothing, no children. Don't you think that they felt like life was passing them by? At the age of 87, Abraham has a child with another woman because Sarah has given up in despair. Abraham has this child and this child happened to be chased out of the house. Does this sound like happiness, joy, fun? Satisfaction. Joseph brought his father Yaakov and stood him before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked Jacob a question because he saw a man who looked older than his age. Pharaoh asked, how many are the days of the years of your life? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. The days of the years of my life have been few and miserable. This is coming from Jacob, Israel. The feeling that if God is running the world and he is just and good, that people who do well enough in the service of God should have happy, smooth, satisfying lives is a very gross misconception. The notion that if a person is good enough, serves God with enough strength and consistency, then their lives should be smooth, happy, satisfying, without any serious suffering, is not true. The examples I gave you, these are men and women whom we cannot hope to compare with, and yet their lives were lived with considerable and excruciating suffering. 